Welcome to the American River. Hi, I'm Bob. And I'm Rick. And, and we're, we're the Robinson, Robinson Twins. Twins. We're standing at the end of California's American River, where it joins the Sacramento River. About a mile south of here is where the city of Sacramento was founded. It's preserved today as the old Sacramento State Historic Park. This place, Discovery Park, isn't just where the American River ends, however. It's also the beginning of the American River Parkway, a 23-mile-long strip of wildness through the asphalt and housing that makes up today's Sacramento. It offers so many forms of recreation, from biking, hiking, rafting, nature observation, picnicking, and so much more. It's one of the best things about Sacramento. We'll show you the Lower American River by biking the Jedediah Smith Bicycle Trail and then paddling down the American River itself. But before we head down the Jedediah Smith Memorial Trail, let's take it in the other direction over the Jaboom Street Bridge and on to Old Sacramento State Historic Park. It's only about a mile from Discovery Park. You'll be following the Sacramento River Bike Trail to get there, a trail that so far is six miles long with plans to extend it in the future. Old Sacramento is a very important place historically. On its 28 acres, it has more historic buildings than any other site in the western United States. During the gold rush, it was a bustling port city with riverboat traffic that rivaled that of the mighty Mississippi. It was also the western terminus for both the Transcontinental Railroad and the famous but short-lived Pony Express. But Old Sac is a subject all to itself, so let's go back to Discovery Park and see what it has to offer before we head down the trail. Here's the confluence of the American River and the muddy Sacramento River. Below is Discovery Park and the boat launching facility where Bannon Slough comes in. Discovery Park is popular with boaters and anglers, especially during the fall salmon run. Besides salmon, there's also steelhead, catfish, shad, sturgeon, and striped bass. These anglers are fishing for striped bass. The American River is considered the most accessible river with wild fish populations in an urban setting for any place in California. Sturgeon are an especially interesting fish since they've been around since the age of dinosaurs. They can grow to 20 feet in length and weigh hundreds of pounds. Discovery Park's wide open lawns also provide space for many forms of recreation including volleyball. Discovery Park also has an archery range which seems appropriate since two or three Nissanon Indian villages were located near the confluence of the American and Sacramento rivers. Nice shot! Now that we've seen what Discovery Park has to offer, let's check on the Jedediah Smith Bicycle Trail. This will take us 23 miles up to Nimbus Dam and 32 miles to Folsom Lake. The bike trail is named in honor of Jedediah Strong Smith, a famous mountain man and trapper who is believed to be the first American to see the American River in 1827. If you have problems out on the bike trail, don't expect this many police to come to your aid. But at least you know they've had practice and are ready and willing to help. These are actually police officers from several northern California cities who have come to Sacramento to use the American River Bikeway for practice. Before heading out on the bike trail we check our bike gloves, helmets, and we're set to go. Make sure you're safe out there. The first bike trail along the American River went from Sacramento to Folsom, and believe it or not, it was completed in 1896, over a hundred years ago. Skating has been one activity that hasn't been allowed on the bike path until the year 2000, when the Sacramento County has set up a trial period for skaters. Contact the Sacramento County Parks Department with the information at the end of this video for rules and regulations that apply to skaters. We'll trace the first phase of our trip along the American River on the 3D computer model, going from Discovery Park to Cal Expo at the 6 mile mark. Beyond the 2 mile mark, the bike path passes under Northgate Boulevard, right next to Bannon Slough. 
And just before reaching Del Paso Boulevard, the Jed Smith Bicycle Trail is joined by the Rio Linda Bike Trail from the north. And beyond Del Paso, the Jed Smith Trail joins the 18th Street Bicycle Bridge that connects over to the downtown area and passes under Highway 160 and a railroad bridge. Between the two and three mile mark, there are several bridges that cross the river. One is for railroads. The next one is the 18th Street Bicycle Bridge that connects the bike trail to downtown. And the other is Highway 160. Around the three mile mark, the bike path is lined to the right side with tall cottonwood trees that have California wild grapes growing up into their branches. Between the three and four mile markers, you'll be biking next to wetlands and sloughs. Watch for waterfowl and wading birds. You might see wood ducks, North America's most beautiful duck. They're called wood ducks because they nest in tree cavities. You might also see great egrets looking for and catching a meal. Egrets were almost driven to extinction by the demand for their plumes, which were used in ladies' hats. Great egrets are certainly the most noticeable wading bird on the American River due to their large size and all-white plumage. Watch as this great egret finally catches a meal after three tries as a pair of wood ducks looks on. Although American coots are more common on the American River, if you're lucky, you might see its close relative, the common gallinule. They can be told apart by the coot's white bill and the gallinule's orange bill. Past the four mile mark, you'll cross under a railroad bridge that crosses the American River near where John Sutter first landed in the Sacramento area. John Sutter was a Swiss immigrant who first lived in the Sacramento area after receiving a land grant from Mexico. The site of Sutter's first landing is being developed into a city park. After passing under Business 80, the Capital City Freeway, you'll approach the five mile mark and the area of Cal Expo. This is where the California State Fair is held every August through Labor Day. It also hosts harness races and many other events. Just inside the levee from Cal Expo is the 86 acre Bushy Lake Preserve. Bushy Lake used to be a natural lake replenished by floodwaters from the American River, but today it's maintained by pumped water from Cal Expo. At the six mile mark, a paved side path provides access to Cal Expo. Here and spaced all along the bike path, the county has set up solar powered emergency call boxes that you can use if you need help. Now let's look at the bike trail from mile six near Cal Expo, past the Guy West Bridge, which connects over to California State University at Sacramento's campus, past Howe and Watt Avenues, to mile 14 just past the Ritchie Bridge in Gady Park. There are two golf courses in the floodplain. Next to the seven mile marker is Campus Commons, a nine hole golf course. Farther upstream, the bike trail passes under H Street Bridge and finally reaches the Guy West Bridge, which crosses over to California State University at Sacramento. The Guy West Bridge is a suspension bridge that was designed by Sac State's engineering department and it looks much like a miniature version of San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge. From the Jed Smith Bike Trail, we'll journey over the Guy West Bridge and two and a half miles on the south side of the American River to Watt Avenue. Alumni Grove is a well-known landmark to Sac State students who often take time out of their studies to enjoy the river there. It also has plenty of shade for enjoying a picnic. After Alumni Grove, the bike path passes under a pumping station for a water treatment plant where much of Sacramento gets its drinking water. This route is used by hundreds if not thousands of Sac State students to get to and from their classes. When we were students at Sac State, we hiked or biked this route almost every day. The boat ramp at Howe Avenue provides access to the river for boaters and anglers. Once out on the river, you can feel free to take along uh, whoever you want. As you continue between Howe and Watt Avenues, perhaps under the watchful eye of western gray squirrels, you'll reach power lines that indicate American River access from Glenbrook Park. And a little farther along, you'll reach what remains of a walnut orchard, and then finally reach Watt Avenue. Now that we've completed the side trip, let's head back to Guy West Bridge and continue along the Jed Smith bike trail. Underneath Guy West Bridge is the beginning of the Vita Course. A series of exercise stations that begin and end here. Unfortunately the exercise stations have not been well maintained. 
fact, some are so overgrown you could easily miss them. But if you want to combine an aerobic workout with calisthenics, it's still quite usable. Between Howe and Watt Avenues, the American River has a number of islands and backwater areas that provide different habitats for different kinds of wildlife. The quiet waters provide an area for western pond turtles to climb up onto logs and bask in the sun. This is close to where we lived during our college days, so it's also been the place we've done the most bird watching. One interesting bird behavior we've seen many times is called mobbing, where smaller birds try to drive off a larger bird, especially if it's a hawk. Scrub jays are very commonly seen in the parkway. These relatives of the blue jay always remind us of British spitfires as they fly overhead. And if you're here in the spring and are lucky, you might see cliff swallows gathering mud. They mix the mud with their saliva to construct their nests on cliffs and under bridges, like here at the Ritchie Bridge. The American River Parkway has many other species of swallow, like this rough-winged swallow. And this tree swallow. Great egrets are often sighted in these backwater areas between Howe and Watt, and occasionally their close relative, the snowy egret, is seen as well. And just because they're called wading birds doesn't mean that wading is all they do. This common merganser is one of a few species of ducks that eats fish. Some of the birds of prey you might see are the black-shouldered kite, the red-tailed hawk, and the red-shouldered hawk.
Between how and what on the north side of the American River, the Nisanan had established a village that they called Kadema. A street just outside the levee on this side is named after that village. Watt Avenue is the next bridge over the bike path and the American River. This area between Howe and Watt Avenues is the area we have visited the most. Occasionally we've gone out to see the nighttime creatures like striped skunks, barn owls, bats, muskrats, and beavers. Even if you don't go out at night though, you'll know beaver live here by the signs they leave behind. Like tail drag markings in the dirt, and gnawings in tree trunks. Beyond Watt Avenue and the 10 mile mark is a nice little roller coaster stretch of the bike path that we like to take as fast as we can. But we can't really go this fast. The bike trail has a speed limit of 15 miles per hour. You know you're going faster than 15 miles per hour if it takes you less than four minutes to go one mile. An access trail leads over the levee from Rio Americano High School to the bike path between the 11 and a half and 12 mile marks. Students from this high school participate in the American River Parkway Foundation's Adopt a Mile of the Parkway program by removing litter between the 11 and 12 mile markers. And while you're biking, watch for snakes that have crawled onto the bike path to warm themselves in the sun. Especially, watch for rattlesnakes. Besides the rattles at the ends of their tails, you should also look for the triangular shaped heads that distinguish them from non-poisonous snakes. The bicycle path on the north side of the river used to stop here at the William B. Pond Recreation Area. It continued on the south side in Gady Park. With the opening of the Harold M. Ritchie Bicycle Bridge in 1980, hikers, bikers, and horseback riders had an easy way to get from one park to the other. A bonus of this bridge is that you can now watch fish swimming in the shallow riffles below. Like a string of pearls, the American River Parkway has a number of distinct parks along the way. One of the best ones, especially for picnicking, is Gady Park, where we are right now. The next section of the parkway we'll show you goes from the 14-mile marker in Gady Park, past the Sunrise Bridge, and onto the 23-mile marker next to the Nimbus Fish Hatchery at Hazel Avenue. From Gady Park, the bike path continues on the south side of the American River, eventually reaching Hagen Park which used to be called Cordova Community Park. Besides an abundance of magpies, Hagen Park also has playgrounds, a fishing pond, and a miniature railroad. The Sacramento Valley Live Steamers takes passengers every other weekend in the spring, summer, and fall months. Write to them at the address we give at the end of this video to get a current schedule. At one point, the treks give you a view of both the Jedediah Smith Bicycle Trail and the American River. On the other side of the river from Hagen Park and the bike trail is Ansel Hoffman Park, the site of the only 18-hole golf course in the American River Parkway. Ansel Hoffman is also home to the FEA Nature Center. FEL was a Sacramento area teacher and naturalist, and she co-founded the Save the American River Association that helped establish the American River Parkway. The FEL Nature Center has collections of live animals, including possums, 
great horned owls, western pond turtles, western toads, and rattlesnakes. The FEA Nature Center focuses on the cultural and natural history of the American River. The center conducts a number of educational programs where you can learn about the wildlife of the American River. Among their programs, you can get up close and personal with some of the native wildlife, like this western screech owl and common kingsnake. From here, three interpretive trails head out into the nearby Effia nature area. The 73-acre nature area is home to many forms of wildlife, including wild turkeys. They were introduced into California from the eastern United States and are thriving here. Some of the mammals that live here include the California ground squirrel, also called the beachy ground squirrel, and mule deer. You can tell that deer live here by the tracks they leave behind, even if you don't see the animal itself. Although, they're pretty easy to see too. What's considerably more difficult to see are the cougars, or mountain lions, that live in the parkway and prey upon the deer. A band of the Maidu Indian, called the Nisanan, lived along the American River. Right next to the parking area is this example of a Nisanan Indian village, including the acorn grinding racks, acorn granary, and thatched huts. But continuing on the bike path on the south side of the American River, by the 17.5 mile mark, we reach our first set of dredger tailings. These heaps of cobbles here at Rossmore Bar and across the river on Sacramento Bar were left behind from gold dredging operations that lasted from the turn of the century until 1962. Sacramento Bar was the last place on the lower American River where gold dredging operations occurred. Just past the 19 mile mark is a nice shady spot where you can rest. By the time you reach this spot, you know you'll be getting close to the next major access for the American River, Sunrise Boulevard. One of the key features in the lower Sunrise area is Jim's Bridge, named after Jim Jones, past president of the Save the American River Association and co-founder of the American River Parkway Foundation. Well, when I came to Sacramento 35 years ago, I came from a place in the Midwest where I couldn't swim at the beaches and the fishing was pretty much gone because of all the development that it channelized the river. I came out here and discovered the American. It was, it was a salvation for me in that here we had this, this beautiful, beautiful river with all these fish. I love to fish with all these wonderful exotic fish that I'd only read about in the magazine Steelhead and Salmon and Striped Bass and Shad and literally in our backyards. And so I fell in love with the river. I, I got involved, uh, switched from fishing and having fun on the river to somebody who I guess you'd call an activist when I found out that there were plans to divert most of the river down the Folsom South Canal. So I joined, say, the American River Association and then became president and uh, I guess you might say architect of the suits that we filed against the Bureau of Reclamation to stop the canal and the East Bay Municipal Utility District, was, which was uh, going to divert a massive amount of water down the canal rather than letting it go down the American River first. And we're standing on this bridge here and uh, I'm not even dead yet, but they... Uh, they renamed it the, the Jim's Bridge uh, several years ago because it was going to be torn out when the uh, parkway was formed and the land was bought. This used to be all gravel extraction here in Sacramento Bar and Rossmore Bar. 
And when that operation ended and we got the money to buy the land, uh, the county, uh, some of the bureaucrats and lawyers said, oh, this bridge is dangerous and it causes, causes a lot of problems. We have to repair it all the time. And people jump off of it and we're going to get a lawsuit if somebody falls on a raft. Well, I led a little campaign to keep the bridge. Uh, so we still have the bridge. It goes underwater almost, uh, seems like every time we have high water, which seems like a lot lately. And uh, sometimes the approaches get washed out, but um, it's still standing. Upstream from Jim's Bridge, the Sunrise Bridge was completed in 1964, and it replaced the Fair Oaks Bridge, which was built in 1908. Today, the Fair Oaks Bridge is used by Sacramento County for hikers, bikers, and equestrians. From the Upper Sunrise area to Hazel Avenue, the bike trail passes through several more reminders of the American River's gold dredge history. At the 23 mile mark of the bike path, just short of Hazel Avenue, the California Department of Fish and Game operates two fish hatcheries, the Nimbus and the American River. The Nimbus fish hatchery raises two kinds of ocean-going fish, both of which lost spawning grounds when Nimbus Dam and Folsom Dam were constructed. Those two fish are steelhead trout and the chinook or king salmon. These salmon will spend two to five years out in the ocean and then, during the fall spawning season, they'll return to the American River where they were hatched to begin the cycle again by laying their eggs before they die. The chinook salmon fingerlings raised here are trucked to the Sacramento San Joaquin River Delta for their journey to the sea so that they won't compete with the salmon that naturally hatched in the lower American River. The spawning season brings a lot of interest in salmon with it. The purpose of the American River fish hatchery is to raise rainbow trout so they can be used to stock streams and lakes in the Sierra Nevada. Besides the fish hatchery, past the 23 mile mark, you'll also come to a new bike path that goes under Hazel Avenue and on to the south side of Nimbus Dam and Lake Natoma. According to Craig Perez, director of the California State University at Sacramento's Aquatic Center, Lake Natoma is a world-class facility for rowing events. In fact, it's one of the three best places in North America. Among its other qualities, it's a short distance from a major freeway. It hosts collegiate and high school championships for the state of California, as well as collegiate championships for the Pacific Coast region. Mr. Perez would love to see Lake Natoma host Olympic rowing events someday. The Aquatic Center has already hosted the first ever National Women's Rowing Championships. The Ducks like getting their handouts from all the rowing enthusiasts, but not everything is smooth sailing. Uh, guys, get out of the way. Now don't go, don't go forward. No, you're going forward. Get out, go sideways. Get out of the, oh, there he goes, he <laughs> finally. So where's the other one? Uh, what happened to the other one? Oh, boy, it went all the way under all the paddles, poor thing. Besides rowing, the Aquatic Center also conducts classes in canoeing, kayaking, sailing, and windsurfing on Lake Natoma, and also has classes in water skiing on the nearby Folsom Lake. The same qualities that make it a great place for rowing events also makes it a great place to get instruction in these various forms of waterborne recreation. Lake Natoma also has a boat launching ramp at Negro Bar. To continue on the Jed Smith Bicycle Trail, we take the Hazel Avenue Bridge over the American River. From the bridge, we can get this one last look at the fish hatchery and see the barrier that directs the returning salmon up the fish ladder and into the fish hatchery. Hazel Avenue also marks the end of the American River Parkway. From here, on the north side of the river, the Jedediah Smith Bicycle Trail continues through Folsom Lake State Recreation Area lands. After passing under Hazel Avenue, the first two features you'll come to are the American River Bluffs, towering to your left, and the Nimbus Dam, ahead and to the right. From our computer model, we can see the rest of the Jed Smith Bike Trail. It goes from the 23 mile marker at Hazel Avenue, along the north shore of Lake Natoma, until the 31 mile marker at Beals Point. Nimbus Dam was built alongside the American River Bluffs. The bluffs have some of the greatest diversity of plant life found along the American River. 
it's a great place to go botanizing. Speaking of botanizing, let's take a look at some of the flowers and other plants you can see while you're out along the American River. One plant you'll want to observe from afar is the poison oak. Watch for its three shiny green leaflets. There are several stables near the American River and riders like to use the equestrian trail that parallels much of the Jed Smith bicycle trail. The American River has a notable history with horses. During the 1880s, the winner of the Kentucky Derby was raised in a stable north of the American River between what is now Howe and Watt Avenues. Continuing on from Hazel Avenue, the Jed Smith Bicycle Trail basically follows the north shore of Lake Natoma at the base of the American River Bluffs. Lake Natoma ends just beyond the Negro Bar area, where the Rainbow Bridge crosses over to the town of Folsom. At the upper end of the American River Bikeway, we can see the imposing structure of Folsom Dam. It was completed in 1955, as was Nimbus Dam. Interestingly enough, turkey vultures are attracted to Folsom Dam. They take advantage of the updrafts coming off of its front surface. A short distance beyond this viewpoint of Folsom Dam, the bike trail passes under the Folsom Dam Road. The state of California operates a visitor center here where you can pick up information about the Folsom Lake State Recreation Area. When you reach the 31 mile marker, there's only about another half a mile to go before you reach Beals Point, the end of the American River Bikeway. We've reached the end of the paved bike trail in the Beals Point area of Folsom Lake. If you want to continue to explore Folsom Lake, the unpaved tops of the levees are available to ride on. Nearby is Beals Point Campground. Because the bike trail runs right by it, you could make a bike camping trip there very easily. Imagine packing your bike, pedaling along the American River, and camping for the night without having to do any driving. Heh, <sighs> I wish I was there right now. For information, call the number for Folsom Lake you'll see at the end of this video. This sign next to the Beals Point Campground is the only one I've ever seen that shows the mileages for all the important points on the bikeway. Now we've reached the end of the bikeway at Beals Point. Next, we'll go down the river itself. But before we do that, a few safety tips are in order for when you paddle down the river. We're at Jim's Bridge about to put in, but before you head out on the water, there's some important things to take care of. First and foremost is having a PFD to keep you floating in the water. 
Of all the drowning deaths that have occurred along the American River, all but one of those victims was not wearing a PFD. Also, because you're out on the water and don't have any shade, you need protection from the sun. Make sure you're wearing your sunglasses, plenty of sunscreen, and a hat to keep the sun out of your eyes. These guys are also concerned about river safety. They're with the Sacramento County Fire Department in training in a state-of-the-art rescue boat. They probably have their work cut out for them because in terms of recreation, the Lower American River is the most heavily used stretch of river west of the Mississippi. Most paddlers put in at Sunrise Boulevard not only because of its easy access, but also because there are two raft rental companies nearby. These paddlers are participating in Down River Day, an annual fundraising event sponsored by the American River Parkway Foundation. And boy are they having a blast. But you can also put in farther upstream below the fish hatchery near Hazel Avenue. The Lower American River is in both the state and national wild and scenic river system in the recreational category. Downstream from Jim's Bridge, you'll pass through some riffles and then curve around the Sacramento Bar in a feature called Suicide Bend. You continue on downstream to the San Juan Rapids, which is probably where Suicide Bend got its name. Paddlers rank rapids from class 1 to class 6. Class 1 is the easiest, class 6 is practically impossible. The San Juan Rapids are the only class 2 rapids along the Lower American River. After the San Juan Rapids, the river slowly meanders past Ansel Hoffman Park and on to Gady Park, where most rafters take out. The Ritchie Bridge allows bikers, hikers, and anglers to travel between the William Pond Recreation Area and Gady Park. This angler is stalking Shad. I don't know if he caught any, but the man on the bridge got one. With a little help. If you want to stay on the river longer, you can continue on through the Gady Rapids and on to Watt Avenue, which is the second most popular takeout point.
After the Gady Rapids, the river slows and widens as it curves around the bend at the William B. Pond Recreation Area. This part of the river has many islands and backwater areas that provide excellent habitat for wildlife, such as river otter. Just below Watt, the Department of Fish and Game has set up these traps to monitor fish populations. And these drift boaters who just passed under Watt are trying to monitor some fish populations on their own. Now that we've finished a day of paddling, it's time to check out the West's biggest paddling event, which happens to be on the American River. It's part of the world's oldest triathlon, Epi's Great Race. What a difference a day makes. We're at Gady Park on the 25th anniversary of Epi's Great Race, the world's oldest triathlon. It was started by local restaurant owner Epi Johnson. I want you guys to know, folks, to know that this uh, race has been officially sanctioned by the American Canoe Association, and they uh, they own Paddler Magazine, and they're going to send they sent a photographer out from Indiana to do a story on uh, Epi's Great Race. Uh, we try to get into Sports Illustrated, we just can't make it. You know, even though we're the oldest, the world's oldest triathlon. I got a phone call from Scott Tinley. You guys know who Scott Tinley is? He's Iron Man, okay? He's, he's doing a, a book on triathlons. He said to me, well, Epi, he said, you're really not a, a triathlon. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you have paddling instead of, 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 of swimming. I said, well, you got to look at the Greek word triathlon means three disciplines, okay? And our discipline is paddling instead of uh, the swimming portion. He says, well, you're not the old, world's oldest triathlon. He says, there's one in San Diego in September 1974. I said, no. We split us in July of 1974, so we truly are the oldest one, guys. Look straight out the door. Mike! Mike! Right here! Mike! Go Mike! Away! Mike! Hey, Bill, look good. Here you are! Ironman 1190. Gary? And here comes Gary Jansrud from Fairfield. Silence. This is our first women's team, the Perfect Strangers. And Midoris Carano, Karen Johnson, and Lynn Riddell, again, our first place women's team, 156, great time. That is a great time, Doug. Midori Sparandio was uh, formerly Midori Waugh, who uh, did the uh, Iron Woman uh, a couple of years back for us. And one of Sacramento's top runners, training for the Olympic marathon trials. As you can see, the American River means a lot of things to a lot of people. But there's probably no one it means more to than Jim Jones, a man who has fought for the river for 30 years. Well, from a recreational standpoint, it, it means everything that I love to do. I, I love to fish, I love to raft, I love to canoe, kayak. Um, I love to dive, although I don't do much scuba diving here. It's sure fun to dive in when the river is, is like this. It's now clear and it's flowing at a, at a decent level. Um, I love to cycle the trail. Uh, I'll probably be going out after work this evening and get on my bike and spend a couple hours on the trail. I love to watch the wildlife. It's just amazing how much wildlife depends on the, on the river. And that's something that we should remember is so many of us use the river, have fun on the river, but I think probably the most important thing I get out of the river is being able to come down to it and kind of clear my mind and uh, all the troubles of the day and the, and the troubles of the world just seem to uh, just float away on these currents. The American River has spoiled us. What other major city has such a wild recreational resource like the American River and its parkway? We may live in a bustling city like Sacramento, but we still have a connection to nature through the American River. For us, the river was a brief dip into nature while we hiked or biked to and from Sac State to take courses in the natural world. 
The river was our favorite place to walk our dearly departed dog, Dusty, and his favorite place for us to take him. And there's been no single place where we have jogged, swam, biked, paddled, or observed nature more than the American River. For nature lovers like us, it is the best thing about Sacramento. Thanks for watching. Now be safe and have fun on the American River.